We've been looking at different research methods and we had videos related to focus groups and to interviews. So now let's look at observational research. Observational research is a systematic process Maybe by the 3000th video, I will uh, actually have text you can read. Systematic process of recording patterns of occurrences or behaviors normally uh, without normally communicating communicating with the people involved. So here, as opposed to interviews and focus groups where we talk to people, here we are observing people. We're either observing people or we are observing some kind of event or phenomenon. So systematic process of recording patterns of occurrences or behaviors without normally communicating with the people involved. Now, when it comes to recording, that recording can be recorded by humans. So we could be watching people's behavior and taking notes or checking things off a checklist, or we could have machines do the recording. And so as we move into more machine learning AI, I really don't want you to go away. Microsoft Edge. Um, we have more equipment, more technology. We do image recognition in videos, and that can do a lot of the identification of events uh, or of individuals, and then and analyze the patterns. So we'll we'll get into that more uh, in later videos. Uh, but right now, we'll just talk about the basics of observational research and how you set up an observational research project. And then if you're doing your uh, pattern recognition from humans or machines, what are some options available to you? So let us go to the different types of observational research. So you can have people watching people. You can have people watching phenomenons. You can have machines watching people and you can have machines watching phenomenons. So let's start with people watching people. So you could, for example, observe uh, in the supermarket uh, consumers selecting frozen dinners. And you could look at how long do they spend uh, in that particular section of the grocery store, how many different products do they look at, how long does it take them to decide what to grab? Do they open the frozen food door and let the air out and make the decision that way? Do they look through the glass to make the decision? So we can have people watching people as we look at people do some um, activity. We can also watch for an event. So we could station people at an intersection and have them count the number of vehicles that go through. And so the event we're tracking, of course, is driving through the intersection. And we are then watching and counting the events. We're trying to figure out if we need a traffic light. Now, in that particular case, you're probably not going to have people watching at an intersection. We can definitely do that with equipment. Uh, and so we can have traffic counting machines monitor the flow of vehicles at an intersection. We could also have uh, machines watching people. So we could have a video camera record uh, the consumers who are selecting frozen dinners. So more and more we see machines doing the watching as uh, we get into more AI machine learning, uh, but we can do observational research where we do have people on hand watching people or watching events. Another example of machines watching phenomenon uh, would be if you've been to a fast food place, you've been to McDonald's, you've been to Tim Hortons, maybe you've seen if you're inside the, the restaurant, you've seen that there's a display screen and that display screen is showing how long each person is going through the drive through And so if we're looking at improving the operations of our organization, then we need to know how many people are in the drive-through and how long it typically takes. 
So at McDonald's, for example, if you're inside the actual restaurant, you'll see the display screen. It'll show you the average amount of time that they are currently recording to take through the drive through And in order to get them to improve their performance, you can also see the metrics for other nearby McDonald's uh, and how long they are taking. So what we have is that we have organizations like McDonald's are trying to make sure that no one spends longer than say 60 seconds in a drive through to improve customer service. So here in this case, that display screen that is tracking the number of vehicles going through the, um, the drive through there we have machines watching events. So in the event being someone has made an order uh, at McDonald's, as opposed to machines watching people where are watching, you know, what is that the individual doing, right? What, what do they look at? How much time do they spend? Here we're watching a phenomenon, All right? So next time you are at a McDonald's or a Tim Hortons or a Burger King inside, see if you can find that uh, display screen where they are tracking uh, how long people are going through those, uh, drive throughs All right, where are we? Okay, so when would you do observational research? You're gonna do observational research, one, when it's something that can be observed. So it has to be public behavior, things that people will do out in the open in front of everyone else. It needs to be behavior that is repetitive, that is frequent, that is predictable. Often we use observational research when a survey or interview wouldn't work because the activity is so repetitive or automatic, we just kind of do, do it on autopilot. And so when you ask people about what they did, they don't remember, right? Well, ask someone about what did they look at last time they bought cereal in the grocery store? Can they tell you what different cereal they looked at, how much time they spent, what they thought about uh, in that time? They just kind of go look, grab something, move on. So. If there's going to be faulty recall, if things are so automatic that we don't actually even think about them at all, um, so we don't recall them or we don't recall them correctly, then it's an observational research that's more appropriate. And it needs to be activities, events that are very short in duration so that we can actually observe them. It can't be something that's over a long period of time. We're not going to watch you over nine months while you are deciding um, or on whether or not to build a house, buy a car. Um, it needs to be something that is very short so that it is observable. And it is something that is repetitive, frequent, predictable, often automated, and something people do in front of others. Right. In our next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down the different decisions that you would make to design an observational research project. So you're going to have to make some decisions about the degree of structure for your observation, the degree of disguise, the setting, the time that you are going to be observing. Are you observing people while they're doing it? Or are you making observations that are kind of the remnants, the after the fact proof that something happened? And then are you going to have the observation done by human or machine? So in our next video, we'll dive into each one of these and the decisions you make as you design your observational research.